50 degrees and rainy. But a huge game on the field for both these teams. Back to Adam Lundergaard to start it off. And looking out wide to Remy Okunlola. And there's Olya Gunlay, who we mentioned earlier. Devin, early on, these two teams, obviously a lot in the line we set up already in the game. Clemson hasn't played in nine days, which is an eternity in college soccer. And coming off that 4-0 thrashing of Louisville, what are you looking for early in the match, particularly for Tigers coming off this long run and then Syracuse team coming off a loss? Let's see how clean they are on the ball, Clemson Tigers, because for a team that for so long all they wanted was a rest because everybody was so banged up, yeah. they start playing well and they get the idea of, okay, this is going to be our structure and now we find success. And then they got to take a break. Mike Noonan said, wish we were playing right away. But how clean can you be now that you've had that absence from the field of play? And I want to see how aggressive Syracuse is willing to go here. Mentioned in the open that 50% of their goals come from set pieces. Well, most of their goals also come in the opening 13 minutes, and specifically Kaluki. And you establish that confidence. This team gets out in front. They believe that they have gotten away from those woes where they concede late. They feel like they can get out and then continue the course. Noah Singleman drops it off to Gavin Wig, who's starting as a right central back, 12. Usually he's been the center of that three back for much of the season. Back to Gabriel Makina and Jaheim Wickham. A sophomore being credited with ACC Defensive Player of the Week. Had some huge saves last game as Alexic hits the ball, but they will play on through some contact. And Brandon Parrish won the call, not going to get it. Trying to play Ned Edwards. A couple Canadians there to each other, Ola Gunley. Edwards, but they couldn't connect. Quick restart. Usman Silla pressuring the ball. The reigning offensive player of the week in the conference. Physical play. One in the middle. Nathan Richmond connecting with Joran Gibe, the transfer from Oregon State. Parrish on it. He loses his footing. Lorenzo Baselli looking for Nicholas Kalukian. And there's Potmar Boy's first foray into action. Again, he has not played since September 22nd. You were a center back. You're coming back from an injury, lower body injury, you're in a wet field. What is that like? Well, the first thing, the most important thing, in my opinion, was making sure you get the right studs on. Yeah. Because you want, you want to be able to plant in and, and be able to chase the game appropriately. Let's make sure that your body feels comfortable. And you know the confidence that I talked about for the Syracuse squad, that's exactly what it is for a defender. You know, you don't have the luxury of having fun on the attacking side of the ball, right? You have to thwart off all the attacks coming towards you. And if anybody's capable of it, it's certainly the freshman phenom, Potmar Boy from Clemson Tigers. He's been incredible. One of the better 1v1 defenders we've seen this season. Sean Smart with the throw. And it goes out to touch, and there's Wickham who's locked down the uh, spot in between the pipes. There's Wickham on the ball. He's been solidified this position since we were at that Duke game where Duke beat Syracuse 5-3. He's been in for Jason Smith. And he had a heck of a game, as you mentioned, against North Carolina. Do you like him better back there than Smith? It still probably remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where we're at. And it's a good problem for Ian McIntyre to have in goal. He's got two very capable goalkeepers, the sophomore and Jaheim Wickham. And Jason Smith, as you mentioned, but chatting with him, he said, listen, everybody likes to talk about the national title and what we did last year. I get it. We're not them anymore. This is a very different team, and especially the way that this team establishes themselves in collegiate soccer. They like to go the transfer route. They have a lot of new faces and new names that they aren't used to the Syracuse way, and a lot of them aren't used to ACC play. So getting everybody going, trying to figure out a way to make sure that that confidence that was last year and put the star above the crest, it didn't exactly happen right away, and certainly not at the goalkeeping position. Wickham has stepped in, and right now we'll just say that it's his to lose. That's probably the best way to look at it. Oaken Lola on a foot race with Edwards, wins that and just plays it out to touch. Ball played in, Sean Smart there. Brought down by Noah Singleman, senior captain tries to turn. Booster Hobert on the ball. Back to Wickham. Brought down by Wig, and his pass picked off. 
tactically, I really like what Ian McIntyre is going to do here this afternoon. If you look at five from Syracuse, Gabriel McKenna, you mentioned how Gavin Wig has gone to the right side of the back three, right? Well, the reason that they've done that is that Gabriel McKenna has stepped up into the midfield. Well, seeing him there is one thing, but when you include Josh Blues into the conversation, normally we see McKenna drop onto the back line. The idea tonight tactically is to lock down some of these center spots in the midfield, but also provide assistance defensively and get rid of Silla. There's McKenna. Ball falls to the feet. Kaczewski couldn't get it out there. Oaken Lola. Silla trying to slip past Oya Gunlay. Kalukian flicks it on, but Lundegaard is there. There's Belou, as you mentioned before, that six foot six frame, the transfer from Villanova. Edwards trying to get in line, plays a good ball in, and Baselli was there but couldn't turn it on frame. It's a beautiful ball. As quickly as you can create the separation on the outside by Nate Edwards. Notice he recognizes the fact that this ball has to be hit first time. The amount of space that Clemson can see, if they do, is usually on the outside. They're really good centrally about maintaining a presence. So whether it's Adam Lundegaard in your screen right there, two and white, Putmar boy, and Jaber on the far side. Although he did get beat, you've still got 2v1. It's a difficult angle, but that's what it's going to be for Syracuse tonight, is if you're going to chase this game, it's got to be down in the channels, quick balls back across, and how many runners can you get into the box to provide support? Joseph Endema, the sophomore keeper for Clemson, took over the gloves early October of last year and hasn't relinquished since. Pacelli wants to start it quick, and Sam Meinhard gets in the way. Little words exchanged. Meinhard, the senior, transfer from Tulsa, being worn by Nikola Alexic. He was the Offensive Player of the Year in the American Conference, not once, but twice. It's goals in the last two games as well. Can we just give a little love to the young lady in the stands calling out the calls? Because she's right. I think she's picked up the field mic, she's and she's just it. talking is, right into this it. This is beautiful, absolutely. It is a yellow card. Good for you. She knows the rules of the game. We believe that's one of the Syracuse women's players. We're not going to say her name, although... We know who it is, but I don't want her to use any French language, and then we've outed her, if you will. Just another great department here, foreign relations, <laughs> academic studies. Where's those, the great, or the white no used, to say, used to say fruity language. Yeah. Apologize for the fruity language. It sounds better in an English accent. Nathan Richmond trying to ride the challenge. He wants a foul, not going to be called. Wig trying to start quick, looking for Kalukian. Wig there again. Played back to Gael Gibert, another Frenchman on this team, another transfer from Oregon State, all Pac-12 player, as was his country mate Gibet. Undergaard can't control. But there's Pop Marboy, freshman from Senegal. Back to Endema. The Ghanaian. Poor distribution. Undergaard. Pass picked off to Parrish. A lot of the Clemson players, a lot of guys losing their footing. They have long enough studs on, to be honest. Most of the guys are wearing molded cleats, which everybody's used to wearing about 95% of the time in the United States. But you get into these conditions, you need something a little bit longer to help establish position with your feet. And Alcon Lola, just to finish that, Mike Newton did say the surface here is different. They play on Kentucky bluegrass. It's not Clemson's not used to that. They play on a Bermuda 
blade of grass. Did you notice and know the difference Absolutely. as a player? Yeah, it's longer too. So it's, you know, I talk about establishing your feet, mm -hmm. but it's also the re-establishment of your stride. The longer it takes to get in, the longer it takes to get out. You're not as quick, you're not as agile. It's harder to get up to a top speed and your body just reacts differently. It, it can very easily get into your head and throw you off your game. It's part of why Syracuse has been so difficult to play against on the road for ACC teams and all competition. It's the travel, it's the trip, it could be the weather and it's sometimes the pitch. And now Alexic stops play. And you see Usman Silla holding his shoulder. There's Mike Noonan. He can't like this at all. 2021 national champ, outstanding career he's had, but he's now watching his star, Usman Silla, who's had injury issues almost every year he's been at Clemson. They've got a lot of guys banged up this season. Mohamed Say is not with the team right now. He's a fifth-year grad student from Spain, outstanding, all, I've, all ACC caliber player. Silla has been all ACC three different times. First team last year, but they say he's okay. Mike Noonan gonna chat with him. When you lose him, you also lose the freshman Marco Garcia, hurt his ACL two mm -hmm. days prior to preseason. So before he even got the option to come in for his sophomore year, he left the field of play. You haven't reached expectations, respectfully, for Isaiah Easley on the front line. Tyler Trimnell, the same thing. Mohamed Sagan. So you're running five deep up there, and yet it's really only one at this point in time. And the stats all pad that young man who is back on the pitch and who's Von Silla. That said, they're the leading scoring team in the nation with 34 goals. So they have it from different places. 13 different goal scorers on this team. And Scylla is electric, but you're seeing Richmond's got five, four goals on the campaign. Four different guys have four goals, so they can do it by committee, if you will. And it's been really the past stretch of five games. Yeah. So, you know, I said coming in that 17 goals in their last five games is best in the ACC. That's half of their goals over five, and they've only played 12. Friendly reminder, one of those includes a shutout where they didn't even score a goal in the loss to Wake Forest. You and I saw that match. It was... Great game, 30 minutes in, Pop Marboy gets hurt, he yeah. goes out, they get a red card, and we're having a very different conversation. But this is why they are so good. They spread it side to side. You know, they don't run necessarily one nine striker. It's, you play one up top, all of a sudden it's Meinhardt. Nate Richmond gets involved, the wing backs. It's a six man attack at any point in time. Kalukian dinks it forward to Edwards. He tried the back heel, no good. Jabe, excuse me, that's Parrish. His pass deflected out by Blues. Richmond battling the bigger wig. Nathan Richmond, son of Richie, who was part of that 1987 national championship team. You're plotting the defense there right there. For a young man that hasn't seen the field of play in four matches, Oya Gunlay is he's been on it so far. And again, the attack at Clemson is one thing. Having to track someone like Nate Richmond, who has so much speed to burn on the outside and he'll he'll challenge you one-on-one -on -one to then all of a sudden shift and track a guy like Usman Silla, who's one of the more difficult attackers in the entire nation mm -hmm. with the ball at his feet. Yeah. Mentally, you have to stay so clued in for the different profile of Ooh. player. And Alexic will not uh, issue a yellow. Mike Noonan wants one. Your thoughts? Not sure how we're not showing a card here. It's very dangerous. It's from behind. He does try and pull out of it, and he said apologies, but two footed. Oh. No card issued. Flicked on. And now Silla's going to be able to run into it in some space. Smart making the run. Can he play him, cut it back? No, really well defended by McKenna. And McKenna said it went off Silla. I think he's got a gripe there. Yeah, this is a goal kick. It should be. Let's see if the referee. There you go. Yep, he changed his call. Far linesman on it. This is where, if you're McKenna, you jump the route too early. You have to keep yourself right on Usman Silla. But notice as he tracks back, he doesn't make a direct line to the attacker. Instead, he cuts it on the diagonal to allow Booster Hoberg to come over and provide support. It doesn't look like that much on camera, but that slight slowing. All of a sudden, Usman Silla questions where he's going to go. It cuts down the passing lane, and the Makina able to get back across. Mm. Jubei, head up. 
Asking Minard to make the run, and Oyo Gunlay shows his physical prowess. Lundergaard, just a little mistouch. Okay. She bear. Lorenzo Baselli was one of the goal scorers last time these two teams met in the ACC championship final back last November. 2 0. Cuse won en route to what it became their first national championship team. Won the treble that year, the division, the conference, and the national title. Won the second ACC team to do that. UNC did it back in 2011. Silla picks up the second ball. Nice job by Noah Singleman. Oh, pop mark, boy. Oh, he stepped on him by accident, too, on the end. Physical. Just goes right through Lorenzo Baselli. And you're looking at, I'll say it, I have no problem saying it. That's the best freshman in the country. Mm -hmm. And Pop Marboy, the defender from Senegal, who just lets him get a little bit in front of him. Lorenzo Baselli. And he's built like a Mack truck, folks. 6'1", about 185 pounds. His first step, though, pure muscle. For a guy that's that big, mm -hmm. as quick as he's capable of getting off the line and using those long legs to his advantage, you know, most coaches will tell you that when it comes to defenders, it's great if you can track, it's good that you're in the air, but it all comes down to that first step, and then how can you get yourself squared up to one-on-one -on -one defend? That's where it's the most difficult to defend, is your, the player in front of you, your feet squared up, and now all of a sudden you've got to shift to someone. So if you can give yourself an edge where you're chasing and pushing, the opponent into uncomfortable situations. It's better, and that's where he's really good. This could be uncomfortable, but Richmond's offside. Flag went up. They had a little three on three, almost developing into a four on three. But Neat's got to hold his run a little bit. So we've already seen Usman Silla come out of the pocket over to the far left side. Alex Meinhardt shifts over to the right. Sean Smart is going to be the constant that comes forward, but the diagonals. Now you see Nate Richmond coming all the way across. This team, attacking-wise, has not just asserted themselves as the best in the ACC, but one of the best in the country. Stylistically, super fun to watch. And look, we're 17 minutes into the match. It's no secret that they want to play in transition and send numbers forward. Hopefully not. Meinhardt brings it down. Well, I, just, well, I thought they played well, but I thought... Kaszewski brings it down. Playing to Kalukian, the channel. Deflects back to Andama. Damas distribution, not good, but Smart's able to skip around Smart, uh, Singleman, and now potentially transition opportunity. Oh, Makina, well done. Nice touch again by Smart. Parrish uses his body well. Smart's cleaned out. No call. Sean Smart, the sophomore from Florida. There's Brandon Parrish. He had some injury issues, but he was playing his just outstanding soccer. Still is. You wanted to say something else there. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I was mumbling was, on football. He was playing lights out. He was playing lights out. He was balling. That's just another one of the progressions that this Clemson squad has had to deal with. You know, you lose your top center back in Pop Marboy, you lost Brandon Parrish, you lost your nine in Mohamed Say, and we're still talking about how good they are, yeah. right? Now, it's yep. nice to have them back, but to be able to establish yourself as one thing, to maintain it in the absence of those is another. In Syracuse also, they have their own issues too. Jonah Leibold uh, still out, their dynamic wing. He was the other young man to score in this 2-0 ACC championship win for Syracuse last year over Clemson getting him back fully healthy. 
Mateo Levesque is out injured in the midfield. So they've, they've had different challenges as well. But these nine days off has helped, if nothing else, Clemson get healthy. Silla on the ball. Good turn by Jabay. Pass leaves something to be desired. Lundergaard trying to track it down. No call there. Letting guys play out here. And Lundergaard now bumps in Baselli the other way. Alexic's going to have to step in the official and get a little control of this. And Alexic's going to potentially take a look at it. To be fair, it was a foul before. Yeah, or oh, he's going to ask the Lundergaard. It should have been. Not take a look. I jumped the gun there. You're going to ask Jordan Ames, the fourth official, what should happen here. Nothing further. And this right here itself, watch the shove from behind. That's a foul. It's not even a question. Shoulder leaned in over the shoulder of Lundegaard, and then just a little how do you do. Tracking back for the center back from Clemson. With a match like this, with these two teams of this quality, should he be looking? They didn't yellow, throw a yellow out there early and letting some other stuff go. Hold on one second as Minor tries to track into the. Does the referee have to assert themselves? Does Lexic have to assert himself in this game a little more? 100% now. Yeah. I don't mind if a referee comes out and says, I'm going to let you play a little bit, but you do have to step in and say, well, that's not allowed. And mm -hmm. we've seen a couple of decisions that he's let go that have been pretty blatant. Richmond blocked by Ola Gunlay. Back to Parrish. Parrish gives it a, clips it in and out by McKenna. No call there. And you've got Kalukian down in a heap. Meinhard out to Smart. Smart trying to get by Singleman. Maselli wins the race. I have this discussion with you all the time. It's twofold when the, the game starts to go this way, right? And I mean that in the sense of the referee letting things go. Number one is, okay, at least he's been consistent and he's letting them play. Yep. Yep. What's going to end up happening, though, is that that time continues to pass and you let these challenges. Guys know that they're going to be able to get away with a little bit more. And number one, they're going to police themselves. The backside of that can end up getting hurt. Yep. You have to be very, very careful of the line that you're willing to walk here. And we've seen that in a couple games this year. I mean, this, this conference, it's high intensity, it's high level athletes. And when it starts getting away from officials, it can become a different game as Pop Mar Boy steps into the midfield. Turned over by Richmond. Kaszewski on it. First in the ACC in assists. Now joined by Ian McIntyre, coach from the Syracuse team. Coach, thank you much, so much for your time. Hey, guys. Just yours. Hey, it's the first How thing. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? What are, give me your thoughts on the first 22 minutes. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a frenetic uh, ACC. Come on. Uh, we just lack a little bit of um, quality in the final third. But, uh, yeah, it's an uh, it's uh, interesting ACC match. Coach, walk us through the role of, of Gabriel Makina t tonight and, and the way that you've deployed him. You've almost got him tracking man-to-man -man on Silla centrally. He's helping out on the back line but still pumping up into the middle. How did we devise this? Um, look, it, uh, if you can tell Silla to stop moving around, it would make it easier for us. <laughs> um, but look, they've, they've got wonderful players and uh, trying to look th these moments, right, where Silla can drop in and cause problems. So that, look, their movement's been good, um, but uh, Gabby's doing a good job of, uh, of trying to close down that space right in front of our back three. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time, as Thanks, always. Thanks, guys. McIntyre, the reigning ACC Coach of the Year. Who do we got to talk to, by the way, to get my guy a... Yeah, national champion Parker, star above it. He, he likes the sweater. He loves it, but you know what? We'll go the sweater in the rain all the time. It's his, it's his uniform. <sighs> That's how he rolls. But if you give him the Parker, I'm sure he'd take it. Yeah. Well, just an umbrella that says, hey, it's me. <laughs> Smart. He able to get the cross off. Wickham comes and grabs it, though. What a demeanor, by the way. Just how happy you are and hey guys how we doing like this crazy back and forth affair I love I, the coaches in this league are outstanding and that's one of the reasons we love covering it uh that's Devin Kerr I'm Dallin Cuff here from SU Soccer Stadium top 21 clash and 
ACC men's soccer, the last two national champions on the pitch. Also a rematch of last year's ACC championship final in which Syracuse won. Syracuse actually has won the last three games between these two teams. Looking to play Baselli in the channel. We are at nil-nil. And limited chances. What have you made of the first 20, 24 minutes here, Dev? The elements are coming into play for sure. Guys are having trouble getting their footing and as quick as we like to see Clemson pivot and then head the other direction. It hasn't been as clean as they wanted to. Ball spraying wide. And even once they've progressed down into the final third, that overall quality just lacking because Mother Nature isn't really interested with them getting a rhythm right now. 50 degrees and quite rainy at kickoff. The rain has subsided for now, but the field's still a little wet. We've seen, as you mentioned, a number of guys slipping and struggling in a bit. To that point, though, I'm surprised we haven't seen anybody try and get clever from distance. Mm -hmm. Because the way that the ball is skipping and people's footing is struggling, I'd like to know how the goalkeeper's going to handle that. 25, 30 yards out, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? If you take a look at the goal area, it's it's pretty muddy. Yep. It, you know, to find your your proper footing, the positioning, everything is going to be a question. And yet, no one's been able to make a save yet, right? Because they haven't been put in a position to do so. And Q, as we said, the rain stopped. It's just started back up again. Nate Edwards trying to make that run in behind Remy Oka. Lola, the freshman, hooked out nicely. And Nikola Alexic was going to stop play here. Is Adam Lundergaard, or is that Brandon? Lundergaard, that is Lundergaard on a knee. See. Sophomore, redshirt sophomore from Maryland, struggling a bit. Started every game he's appeared in this year. This will be his 12th start out of 13 games. A reminder, he got crushed just in front of us. It's true. Right onto that shoulder in front of the bench when Baselli came in from behind. Goal kick. Take a look at the box. We'll show you the one on the Syracuse attacking side right now. Chewed up. And, and before warm-ups, that was tarped off, and you couldn't touch that. Till both about, sides were. Both sides were about, yep. what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to kick off? Yep. And yeah, the goalkeeper's warming up on the side. And it's funny, we just had this conversation the other day. I was talking to Ian McIntyre about, you know, guys warming up and you know, what, what are the progressions for? You and I sat down and we started to talk about it, what it's like in different sports. Even for goalkeepers, when you don't get the chance to get the touches and kind of feel what your environment is going to be like, mm -hmm. it's odd. Yeah. It, it's strange as a player. It's it's very, very strange as a goalkeeper. And that you got to come back in and face off against some of the best attackers in the country. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Just a simple day at the office. It's easy. Yeah. So first time really a chance to send some bodies forward. Again, this is where Syracuse has thrived this year. 10 of their 20 goals from set pieces. Now this is a bit further out, but they still have you know, 33. Josh Belouz is in the mix there. Gavin Wig at over 6-2 is in the mix. And the ACC leader in assist, Giorgio Koscheski, is over the ball. Watch Kalukian on the second ball. This should be hit to the back post and then redirected to the six. Whipped in, looking for Belouz, and Popmar Boy wins that battle. Hook back out, and Kaszewski does get there. Defended well by Smart. And it'll go out for a goal kick. A, co a corner actually changed it. Here we go. So now this, again, this is where Cuse has been great. Number one in the nation. They generate 8.33 corners a match. This is their first one. Here comes on Felipe Diagostini, first substitute of the match. He's replacing Baselli. Baselli kind of limping off. You see him at the walking just behind the... He looks like he's all right. Play to the front near post and Belouz. He's saying it came off of Parrish, but not going to get the call. Oh, the service by Kaczewski again. I just talked about strikes a second ago. Even though the ball's being whipped in. the other way and you get something to skip up off the deck right on the near post the defender is going to have just as much difficulty trying to react to it as a goalkeeper will 
Pop Marboy tries to go in his head, goes right through Kalukian. And the transfer from Michigan down in the heap again. Oh. It's, it's, it's smart by the striker because he turns his back at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that he was coming, what Pop Marboy is trying to do is get low, lean his shoulder into him. But Kalukian recognized the defender right over his shoulder. So that quick little turn at the end, you can't fault the defender for the step. That's IQ from the striker, because the second that he starts to turn, all of a sudden it's in from behind, as opposed to that shoulder charge, which is allowed. Kaszewski from a similar spot, we just saw it. And now comes in Damon to easily claim. Tomorrow night, Monday Night Football, and the crew will be at SoFi Stadium. Should be a good one. Chargers host the Cowboys, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. And in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, the ESPN Deportes telecast with Robin Landis Call will air on ESPN2. She's the first woman to, woman to do play-by-play -play for an NFL game on Spanish-language TV in the U.S. Tune in tomorrow night. And we've got Kalukian down again. It's the second time we've seen him reach to the backside of his head on the challenges being thrown his way. This one from... Javert, transfer from Oregon State. Watch the arm just down on the end of it. He does go straight up. The arm comes out a little bit. To be fair, Kalukian's drifting into his path. And while we were in that replay, Kalukian was saying to Nikola Alexic, he was motion with his arm, saying yep. he hit me with his, his arm in the back of the head. Let's go get some treatment right now. Am I seeing the sun come out? Is this what, what is across I don't know the horizon? What, I don't know what that thing is here. <laughs> I, I'm not aware. When I come to Syracuse, I don't know if I've ever seen it. This is true. For all the SU fans, I love your town. You guys are great people. The weather can be challenging, but yes, last time we were here was lovely. I think this is our third time at Syracuse this year. People are, in general, quick to point out for the Floridian that, hey, maybe Same. you're a little bit cold. And I was like, look, it's simple. I'd rather surf than ski, okay? It's, 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 not, Folks, it's a preference, that's it's, all. It's 50 out, these Syracuse fans are going to hate this. We have hand warmers in our pockets in our hands right now. We're real men, I think that's what they call us. Listen, if, if, if all the fans get to sit down there with their parkas and their hoodies and their hats, we deserve something, yeah. right? I'm glad you brought that. you got a whole, like, Costco-sized thing on hand warmers, though, I like. Slenderguard steps forward as we re get back into action. Kalukian held out because of the treatment. They are still playing 10 v 11. And Jibbe forces it out. Actually, they did sub for Kalukian. Daniel Diaz Bonilla, the transfer from Princeton, came in. But now Silla on the turn, looking for Richmond, but Booster Hobart. Protected and wick him off to claim. Sock or Wickham from Brampton, Ontario. It's part of the Trinidad and Tobago youth setup. Their program there. I'll give him credit so far. The communication by Jaheim Wickham, spot on, keeping everybody in front of him organized. And even when things have broken down. Syracuse have done a really good job of keeping it to the side. They're not allowing anyone to get any sort of penetration right through the middle of this back three, and really four when you include Makina into it. How hard is that job for Makina? Because he is tracking Silla all over the place. It's a nightmare. It's one of those ones that when you're in the locker room and the coach is telling you how important you're going to be in the game and your role within the match, you step on the field and you're like, thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much for the responsibility. Because you basically don't have a free moment. The second that you stop, you get yourself into trouble. That's why Usman Silla is so good, because if you watch 10 and White from Clemson, he's always moving. Now, it could be in, in the center of the field. He'll move out to the side. He's trying to find a spot to step in and then push forward. There's Makina stepping in and pushing forward. Tried to find Diagostini, the Brazilian. Kalukian down again. He just came back in. And He's limping around. You can see him on the bottom of your screen. Down, 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 down. 
Smart in a little pocket of space. He's got options. Flag goes up, though. But Wickham was off his line anyway. Notice where that comes from. This all started, though, from the step that you just saw from Makina. You've got to have the understanding that th there's patience, there's responsibility, and then when you can and cannot go. The second that you go, I said, you, you turn off for a second, they recognize it. Smart was actually yelling, and he's saying, play it now, play it. He wanted the ball quickly and behind, because then you can square it. Instead, play slows down. They still get it through, but that makes Silla and everybody else trying to react as opposed to being the positive nature that has seen so much success where they're making you chase them. And just where the cameras are positioned here, it's not you're not looking right down the line. Did you he did look like he was offside there. He, was right off. he had already set up a reservation for dinner. <laughs> Christopher Burnkamp, the far side assistant, had his flag up. Kalukia now, lays it off to Koscheski. To lose. Koscheski, a little clever flick, but to nobody. That's where they missed their two All-Americans, Levante Johnson and Nathaniel Opoku, the two strikers who turned professional last season. Johnson going into the MLS Super Draft now with Vancouver Whitecaps and Nathaniel Opoku. He's actually on loan in Belgium, if I'm not mistaken, via Leicester. Th those little flicks and, and just the understanding that Kaczewski had with them last season is really what they're lacking this year. Again, eighth overall in goals in the ACC and second worst when it comes to shots on target per game. It's just four. All the more important reason why the limited opportunities that they have, they've got to be cleaner given the chance to do so. And, that just hasn't been the case. Okanola with a good step, plays it forward. A little contact by Ola Gunlay, no call. And, and Johnson, you mentioned him. Last year he had a goal and an assist. And what was their coming out party down at Syrac down at Clemson? Syracuse beat them 2-1. First time the Clemson had lost at home in over 30 matches. And that's what kind of opened. We were there to call that match, and that opened everybody's eyes to be like, what's this Syracuse team capable as Tyler Trimnell comes on for Nathan Richmond? It is interesting that the ACC this year, you know, college soccer, we're going to talk about it at halftime about not who we think, who we know the best team in the country is and what the future could look like for them. But within ACC conversation, we don't really have that one team or maybe even two mm -hmm. that are kind of just head above heels better than everybody separated. else. It's hard to separate in this conference. Very, but, very difficult. But in years past, we've seen a little separation. I think from talking to coaches, it's the most parity we've seen yeah. in terms of top to bottom. and team's capable of winning as Makina just a little foul throw lost the ball what's funny is he actually called a foul didn't even call a foul throw nah. called a foul throw on the challenge but yeah it's, okay. think about it in a positive manner maybe the ceiling where you have that one team that's just running away and setting records and you know it's wins and points maybe that's not there but the basement the oh, overall yeah. quality for everybody has come up which is why the results are so constricted, everybody's just abusing each other, to be honest. Little one two, Jabay's pass is short, though. Ball goes out. Let's talk about the ACC success in recent years, really, over the last you know, two decades. 19 national titles, seven programs, at least one title. At least one college cup in 21 of the last 22 seasons. The last three years, they've had at least two teams in that final four. Harris drives it in on the doorstep, and it dinks around just barely. Trimnell just entered the match. The sophomore from South Carolina couldn't get any touch on it. It's a heck of a ball, though. I mean, the the look by Brandon Parrish, this is what I've mentioned oh. to you so many times before. The ball itself is so good, not because of where he's trying to put it, meaning normally you want that ball in the air and you want someone on the end of it, but because of the elements that you're dealing with, that little hop in front, it's so difficult for his player included. 
to be able to get a touch on it. Man, that was really a point. A ball well played in that just couldn't get anything. He got his hip on it. Not going to do much. Daniel Diaz Bonilla, the transfer of Princeton, checks back in for Kalukian, who's been laboring. Former All Ivy player, Princeton, multiple years. By the this way, this team does have 14 transfers. Go ahead. Said 20 out of 21 college cups for an ACC team. Any idea which year didn't have one? This is where we need a sponsored trivia question. Affleck, Affleck, Affleck. Um, we're giving him some free pub. Uh, I don't have it for you. 2018. Okay. Maryland took down the title, followed by Akron, Indiana, and Michigan State. Hmm. Get you. Did you know that without looking it up? Uh, no. Wikipedia is a great thing. Yeah, thank you. And it's never wrong, too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> never wrong. Neither is the internet. The whole thing's always right. Accurate. Well sourced. Mike Noonan and his crew trying to work the fourth official. Jordan names. These teams, we mentioned their history recent years, but talking about College Cup, they met in the 15 College Cup. Clemson moving ahead in pens and winning that one to go into the final, which they eventually fell to Stanford. The Agostini, the Brazilian, just too heavy in his pass. Don't adjust your TVs, folks. The sun is coming out. Out to Makina. Singleman's pass is wayward. Meinhardt head up. Yes, Bonilla, connecting, getting it to Diagostini. Oh, Diagostini still on it. Yes, Bonilla off the bar! First gilt-edged opportunity of the match for either team. I don't think he saw it. I don't believe in his own mind that he thought this ball was going to make its way to him. Clever ball here by Kaczewski to let that go. Most players want to try and slide this through for themselves and get real tricky with it. And a man who's got nine assists knows exactly where everybody's going to be. And it's interesting, the form, the way that he has to stretch for it, his body just starts to come back a little bit at the end of it. Even Andema thought that he was going to try and go low, far post, which most players would try and do in that situation. Why would most players do that in that situation? It's, the most amount of power, the best technique that you're going to get out of your body, coming back across your natural progression. If it's to your right, your body wants to swing that right foot, and the motion's going to cut across the body. Mm -hmm. So that's why the ball is going to pick out to the far post. It's also really good reaction by the goalkeeper recognizing that. Agostini does a good job, and Pop Marboy comes out for a foul. Now you see Syracuse wanting, I think it may be a yellow on accumulation. Yeah, he's, he's his third. Three, third foul, and this but, one again. 40 minutes in, yeah. the referee stayed very consistent. You may not like how the game's being called, but it is being called in the same fashion since minutes one, which yeah. if you're a player, again, agree with it or not, at the end of the day, if you're a player, all you want is a level of consistency, and it's been there. Maybe. Nope. Boy is there. Clearance poor, though. Singleman. He goes down in a heap, and Alexic says no. Let's take a look. There was certainly contact behind it, and it's very difficult from that angle to really get a true idea. So Singleman now is going to make way. Jackson Glenn, bit of a utility man, does it kind of all for this team when needed. He made his debut at Clemson against Clemson in 2020. He's played in a lot of big games and different tournament spots last year in their run. Came in when they needed him and played about 30 minutes. In a College Cup game. The Agostini's saying, hold on, let's just gain control of it. 
Agostini. Syracuse has looked a little brighter here the last few minutes. Diaz Bonilla. First time cross, and Endema's there. That's great goalkeeping. It's a very good ball by Kaczewski, but again, that understanding by Endema. His technique is good. There's no doubt about that. His ability to read the play and just step right in so calmly, push off the attack. It's a real good idea why last year he took the sweater from Trevor Mannion a couple of games into the season. And he's never relinquished it. Arthur Duquesne has checked in the match. He was actually making the run down the left. Duquesne, another. Frenchman, but he's a freshman. It's his first program here. Amiens, France. Looks like he replaced Sean Smart. I actually thought that he was going to be the one to get the start this evening. His 11th appearance on the year now, but you know they were able to get Pop Mar Boy back. And the reason would have been if Sean Smart would have been on the back line. Romeo Canlola would have stayed on the right. And in the absence of Enrique Montana, he had to find someone to step in there. He has been the one who has provided support there. It's another key injury but we didn't mention. Enrique Montana, whose role changed in this the year was they've gone to a three-back system. But he was used quite a bit. And he's part of that, that 21 national championship team. He was a right back and very experienced and talented player. Silla and Hobert in a little bit of a foot race. Credit, by the way, to Mike Noonan and the staff because to get guys to buy into one idea is difficult enough at the collegiate level with the same players. Mm -hmm. Yet alone the fact that you lose a bunch of guys to the pro ranks, you've got young players like Pop Marboy, the freshman, and Dama in goal. You've changed systems. You've taken roles from players and said, we don't need you there anymore mm -hmm. to be the best for this team. We now need you over here. And again, to just maintain that success, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And Trimnell can't keep it in play as we go under 50 seconds in the match. Wickham seems content just to let this half end as he slowly gets the ball and kind of jogs back to put it in play. This game has world-class goal or massive mistake written all over it. Someone's going to score some <laughs> kind of worldie to win this game 1-0 or because of the level, for most part, quality of defending that we're seeing, the inability to produce any sort of options in the attacking end, what could be a, a mistake in front of goal. Or 3-2-1, we're going to go down, and that's... I'll tell you what, the Syracuse fans want that worldly to be the team in orange and blue because they saw one against Temple midweek that gave them a 2-1 loss with 30 seconds or 40 seconds to go in the match. National champs at Syracuse, the 22 national champs. Nikola Lexic looks at his watch, the center official, blows his whistle, underway. Second half from Syracuse, no rain. Sun subsiding a bit from where it was at halftime. <laughs> you had to get that in there, didn't you? We had to. Here's a better question. Oh, go, by all means. To make sure that you're comfortable, are you preferring snow or rain? For me? I mean, if it's 40 degrees out, do you want to just get it over with and have it snow, and then we drop it down to the mid-30s, or are you okay with the 40 and rain? I'm mentally not ready to handle this question right now. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not ready for the, for the northeastern winter. And you're a Florida boy, I'm jealous of you, so. The good, the good news is there's always a spare bedroom. Well, some of us are busy, but I'd love to be down there just hanging out. I don't even get to sleep in my own bedroom. What to say? <laughs> what are you, you're not there. I'd just be hanging out with you and your three kids, your wife and your three kids. Booster Hobert on the ball. Got his first career goal last week at North Carolina. The winner is the first road win for this Syracuse team. Clemson looking for their second road win of the season. Come from behind W at USF as their only road win. Two losses on the road. All right, Dev, early here in this half, what are you focused on as we get things going? 
what piques my interest so far from Syracuse is the fact that Lorenzo Baselli hasn't come out onto the field. You know, this is instead, it's going to be Felipe Diagostini, which Ian McIntyre is very high on. It's, it's number 11 in blue and orange for Syracuse. What he does, though, is he'll come even deeper. And Kaczewski, they want him to stretch the game. Everything is going to rest on that man right there, though, Nicholas Kalukian. You know, for a guy that was so good at Michigan, 2022 Big Ten All-Freshman team, he had four goals and an assist in 16 appearances. He's only got three on the year this year. And the reason being, he's always by himself. Mm. They put so much emphasis on him by him lonesome. If they can try and get some support around him, that's where that team is at its best. And you mentioned Baselli. He's their leading goal scorer. He went out at the 28 minute mark in the first half and has not come back. He did jog on the end line, and we'll see if he's able to go. There's more of a tactical change. Nice dink over by Silla. He continues his run. Richmond, you're not going to outrun Oya Gunlight very often. And the offside flag up anyway. Let's discuss another matchup, too. What's interesting to me is we just spoke about Lorenzo Baselli, and you've got Kalukian, too, right? Those two of what could be. To me, I'm also looking on the far side of the field. 33 from Clemson. Arthur Duquesne, the true freshman. We said maybe he would be involved in the mix here. Well, they've kept him on the field instead of Sean Smart. Well, why is that important? His legs are a little bit fresher. More importantly, it's for me, it's, it's Noah Singleman. Mm. Noah Singleman for this Q's team last year took so many strides at the wing back position. He got injured a couple of games into the season. But getting back into full form, he's got to be outside on the right. He was pinned so deep defending in the first against a true freshman. I'd like to see him challenge here. See if you could stretch the game and provide the balance so that you have both Singleman and Nate Edwards having a presence on the outside. It's 4 and 18 on the wings, respectively. There is Singleman. Oja Gunley trying to play Edwards. There's the freshman you mentioned, Okalola, Diagostini. Ola Gunley, first game in the lineup since the Duke game where he took a red card and had a little bit of an injury in the week in practice. Silla continues to battle with Makino. Good hold up play. Jabe took his eye off it. Looking forward for Oak and Lola. Hobert to put it back into play. But nicely done. Edwards back to Diagostini. He goes down the heap. Alexic says no. It is only reviewable if the penalty is given. It was not given. Meinhardt in a quick transition. The transfer from Tulsa, two time American Offensive Player of the Year. Silla, nothing doing. Might fall to Duquesne, it does! Deflected and it's in! Flag is down! And how about that from the sub from France? Arthur Duquesne, the quick transition the other way, puts his team up 1-0, his first career college goal, and at a huge time. I see an outside position. It was a great move on the other end by Syracuse, the little cutback across that angle right there tells a very different story. That could have been a penalty. 
But on the clearance back out, watch him try and get back into an onside position. I'm not necessarily sure he is. If he is, it's because Booster Hobert in the middle of that back three keeps him back on. But the touch, we said the entire time, regardless of where you're at on the field, you've got to find a way to challenge the goalkeeper. First time they've truly gone after Jaheim Wickham, and they're rewarded for their efforts. Arthur Duquesne, in his 11th career game, gets his first goal, and now a little bit of shuffling by Ian McIntyre as Gavin Wig comes off. And Jackson Glenn now looks like he's on the back line. We'll see how this plays out. So Glenn, 23, just entered the match. Singleman on it. Belukian pressed out by Pop Marboy. It's most action we had all game, and a lot went down in about 30 seconds. We'll come back to that penalty discussion in just a minute. Kaszewski on the turn. Well, interestingly enough, not only have they brought Jackson Glenn back, he's basically assumed the role that Gabriel Makina had that shadow for Usman still in the midfield. And Makina's gone back out to that right side as Silla started to flush. Kalukian spilled! Oh. Joseph Andema smiling a little bit now. Take a quick look at the penalty shout again, Dev. Remy Okunlola, watch his foot when it comes out. Not there, right here from behind. See that angle, I see two things. One of which looks to be contact, but because you can't see the depth on the touch of his right foot, I've got to give him the benefit of the doubt because you do see the ball move a little bit. So his foot could have caught the ball. The real question would be is, is he still in a like, fully negative position coming from behind? A lot of referees, We'll punish you for that. If you're just tuning into college soccer, you're unfamiliar, there, there's no VAR if the call is not made. If the call was made a penalty, Nikola Alexa can go check it at the monitor to confirm that he does want to award a penalty, but it cannot go the other way. So that decision is obviously done and passed, and then Clemson made him pay even more, went and scored the other way within seconds. And that's where we stand right now. Lukian tries to get the turn. And out for a corner. I think it's set up. Let's take a look at the goal. He's in an onside position again. The idea was whether or not he was in an offside position. We were trying to establish squeaking in behind as that ball popped out. A fighter angle that maybe he was. Come back to that second corner of the match. Kaszewski to take. Kina puts it back into the mixer. And out by Parrish. Silla tangled up with Edwards. Edwards goes down, but Ola Gunlay is going to have the ball. And he turns it over. This could be dangerous. Got Parrish wide open through the middle. Can Duquesne play him? Tries to, didn't have enough on it. Now you got Diagostini, creative on the ball. Out to Singleman, first time to Kalukian. Can he turn? Jabeir had a fistful of shirt, but no call. Chesky wanted it. You leave that in, and Kalukian just lets that go. There was a shout for it, too. You're wide open in the midfield.
Keenan just kind of blasts it deep. Luke, he's been working nonstop in this game. Good step by Glenn. Plays it long, and Silla will pick up the second ball. Skips past Makina, looking for Richmond. Wickham spills it, though. Now he goes hard at Richmond, and Alexic says he got the ball. Woo. Ventures from the sophomore. Syracuse struggling to combine here. Another turnover. Out to Silla. He's got options in the middle. On the overlap is Duquesne. Still Silla. Leaves it for Jibé. Duquesne. Frenchman back and forth. To their third compatriot. Out to Oak and Lola. Jaber on it. And generates a corner from it. And Alexic's actually telling Nathan Richmond, hey, let's go play, man. And let's just slowly walk out to the corner. And it looks like Parrish there short. Second corner of the match, not many generated from Clemson. Surprisingly from Syracuse, first in the corner, first in the country at this category. Only two, in swinger. Like Jabay got his head to it. Breaking the action, so next Sunday afternoon over on ACC Network, the seven ranked Clemson women's soccer team hosts 17th ranked Pittsburgh at historic Riggs Field. Tigers coming off a shutout win against Syracuse yesterday, while Pitt beat Duke one nil on Friday. Coverage of this one begins at 3 Eastern on the ACC Network. The Syracuse women's team in attendance. And at that last break, we did see Mateo Levesque, seven, come into the middle of the field. He's been a key guy that transferred from UConn, first team All-Big East player last year, but he's been dealing with injuries. What does he bring into this mix here? It's just quality of disposition on the ball overall. And for a midfield that's, they're rattled right now. They're doing a ton of chasing and it's with the tweak that we've seen up top for Syracuse, where Alex Meinhard has come a bit more central, and he's paired right up next to Nate Richmond. So as they come in, it's just more bodies. And so you're trying to track, you're trying to give Kacheski a break as well, and hoping that down this stretch run, you'll be able to re-infiltrate him into the midfield. I'd still like to see a little bit more out of Josh Ballou is paired next to him because as much as you've removed that third midfielder who's tracking the space and Silla, you've got to provide that extension going forward. They haven't done a good enough job of that today. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lola called for the foul on Olegunle. You mentioned Syracuse in the first half that they had lost on this pitch in midweek to Temple, a team that had previously only won a game. It was 1-0 for the majority of the game. Gabriel Makina scored with just minutes to go, and then hearts are broken here as there was an absolute worldie with a minute and change. Scored by the Owls, so they win 2-1. It's been over a year since Syracuse has lost consecutive home games. Two years. September of... Oh, we're going postseason for yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a little bit different. Regular season, we're going to 2021. I mean, that's the fortress that they've created, right? Pretty impressive. Richmond tries to dink it up over the top. Alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cuff. 1-0. Clemson up over Syracuse, the last two reigning, last two national champions 
in men's soccer facing off here. And it's been an eventful second half as there was a penalty shot on one end for Syracuse and that wasn't granted and seconds later Arthur Duquesne opened his college account, the freshman from France scoring a goal just five minutes in to the second half and that's where we stand right now. Jiron Gibay is rides a challenge out to Richmond. Still Richmond, cuts it back, opportunity for Silla! Oh! But a great block! Wow, Gabriel Makino, we've been talking about him and Silla battling all day, and he just saved a goal. Uh, Silla has gone back out. This is the tactical change we just talked about. Richmond and Meinhardt come out. Silla fluctuates to the left, and now you still got a track, though. And a cut on a dime, grab the ball off the line, step up into the penalty mark, full extension. He has been the best defender for Syracuse all season long. The transfer from Niagara, just a huge play there. Clemson, the leading scoring team in the nation now with 35 goals in the campaign. Looked destined for 36. Keeps it a one goal game, played short, back to Richmond. Over to Duquesne, the goal scorer. He clips it in back post. He's got an option back there, headed down. Pop more boy, flag up. The freshman from Senegal almost got his third goal of the campaign, but no. He can do it all. Let's be very clear about that. He can do it all, but notice as he just drifts. That's a lot closer than it looks. May have been the first ball offside. Has to, has to look, be. Has look. to be. Mr. Hoberg just underneath him. Looked like on the second, he kept him in an onside position. So we've talked about the Syracuse team and their offensive struggles. They needed more quality in the final third. Only 10, 10 of their 20 goals off set pieces. What do they need to do here to generate more opportunities in the flow of live play here today? I would say these balls, number one. If you win, you can't win the first, I should say. It's the second and the third. And we saw something similar the other night for NC State and Duke, right? Winning those 50 50 type challenges. They've got such a tall center back, which is a mismatch. Ooh, on this may back. be an opportunity. Levesque picks it up. Charges, deflects out for a corner, and Popmar Boy is slow getting up. All day, whether it's been Vaselli, Diagostini, Bonilla, all of these guys, they're having trouble, but this is what you want. You pick up the second ball, and then you start to continue to push forward. It also, when you win that first one, it compresses the field, and then you have the width. Here's the problem you run into if you're Mike Noonan on the back side of this. Incredible recovery by Popmar Boy. He tweaked his ankle in that one nothing loss at Wake Forest a couple of weeks back. It was a high ankle sprain that they've been slow to bring him back in. Weren't even necessarily sure we were going to see him in the 11 tonight. Slow to get up, but just there. Points to the sideline, hand up. You're hoping this is just a stinger. You pick up an ankle injury before, sometimes you catch it at a wrong angle, and it just sort of reverberates through, and you question yourself for a second. Looks like he's good to go, though. Come back to that in a second as he walks off. This is important because he's your most uh, best player in the physical aerial battles, and he's now out because the trainer did come on the field. So he is walking off. And now you've got Mateo Levesque over the ball, third corner of the match for Syracuse. As we said, they get him over eight a game, first in the nation, 8.3 to be exact. And they will sub in Titus Sandy Jr. because he was out injured. They can make that exchange. So you have. Him coming against Titus Sandy in an interesting situation here, defending a set piece, the senior from Charlotte, his 10th appearance on the season. Out swinging ball. Looked like there were almost two guys to take a swing at it. Glenn and Hobert, and nobody made contact. Watch out. Way too much space open right now. Oh, good feed by Duquesne. Nicely done, Silla gets on the turn. He's got options, but can't play him. Crowded out a bit. And Duquesne is, doesn't matter if he gets there, the flag is up. Pop Marm boy waiting to come in back into the match.
Agostini can't bring it down. Off the deflection, Duquesne plays it in. Now, Lorenzo Baselli was warming up. We saw him, we showed him earlier jogging on the end line. He was swing, doing leg swings next to Coach Ian McIntyre as Popmore Boy comes back in. He's now just standing on the bench. So your leading goal scorer may be done, the, the senior from Italy. And now as we say that, he's now walking down and talking to Coach McIntyre. And it looks like he's going to give it a go, and they could use him, to say the least. And Giorgio Kaczewski also takes off his penny. So both will be coming in the match, it seems, down a goal and needing to turn this around. Lundberg heads it out. Lundergaard, excuse me. And they've bypassed the idea over the past couple of minutes of really trying to play a lot more direct mm -hmm. up over. Do you like that? I do, because I told you, if you even if you can't win that first ball, if you can get enough players to come up and staring straight down this line, they approach over the center circle. They got six players within 40 yards of goal, but all six of which are about 15 yards away from each other. Mm -hmm. You can't win the first one. Now you've got the second and the third to allow yourself to have options. I do like the quality of them on the ball, but oh. they haven't been able to showcase that for themselves all day. Wickham turned it over is almost a problem there. And now a couple different changes being made. As we mentioned, Baselli does check back in the game. Check back in the game. Daniel Diaz Bonilla and Giorgio Kaczewski, who's having a great senior season right now in terms of all-time senior assists. He's second behind Marcelo Vital. And now he is also fit, tied for fifth overall on the season with nine assists. He'd be chasing the all-time record in one season, 16. A reminder, those nine assists, by the way, seven from set pieces, nine assists, tied for second best in the nation. I mean, that is, he's been incredible. And you and I were talking about it last night, how, how he's been able to do it. And, you know, sometimes you just have to embrace what part of your identity is. I'm sure that coming into the season, in McIntyre probably didn't want to say, well, we're not going to score a ton of goals, and most of them are going to come from restarts. Mm -hmm. But that's where it's come. So if you can you can dig into that and lean it, and that is some of those long balls that I talk about. Fouls are going to come out of that. You all of a sudden you reset the field 40 yards out. Kaczewski on the ball? Absolutely. Meinhard. Ridden out of play for a goal kick. Oh, I wish I could hear the music right now. Da -da 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 Our next ESPN NHL doubleheader Tuesday night. The Lightning in Buffalo taking on the Sabres at 7:30 Eastern. Then the Kraken host the Avs. Coverage begins at the point. Great show, 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Is there better music than the NHL ESPN music? Come back to that in a second. Nathan Richmond's trying to score. Sean Smart ahead of him. Richmond deflected, though, from the angle back here. If that was clean. There is, there is one better one, by the way. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Oh, McNoonan, I think we're going. Very high on Nate Richmond. But the night that has been, oh yeah, Gunlay, he's done very well for himself. You would never know that he has missed three matches and almost a month's worth of action. Richmond taking his time. You're gonna go NBA and NBC? No, it's definitely the Champions League. <laughs> it's just different. Champions League's great. It's it is just different, different, and it is different. It is totally different. I mean, who would have thought? Let's have some classical horns and strings for an anthem, but it works. Parrish to take. Looking to double their advantage. It's over the end line. And you could hear Ian McIntyre saying, come on, ref. That was about a minute of time wasted just to take a corner. Yes, Bonilla doesn't go into it. Jabe gets a touch to it. Palooza's 6 6 frame coming in. Duquesne, the goal scorer. Striding forward. Still Duquesne. Shoots it. Save Wickham. Still on it. Trying to get it back in the middle. Falls to Silla. Clemson's had the better of the chances, and they have the score line to show it in the second half. That's a very good save by 
Jaheim Wickham and coming back across. Doesn't necessarily know if this ball is going to be struck because you've also got Richmond and Brandon Parrish who are crashing the party on the back post runs. Tyler Trimno back in the match. Placing Sam Meinhard. Meinhard, Tulsa transfer, two-time offensive player of the year in the American. Trimno, the sophomore from South Carolina, local product, getting back in there. A big goal in that game against Duke. Big win for Clemson a couple weeks back. Clemson's won six of seven, trying to make it seven of eight right now. After blasting Louisville, beating Duke, those are both ranked wins. This would be their third. Jabay head up. You see Jackson Glenn now shadowing Usman Silla. Gabriel Makina did check out of the match a few minutes back and haven't seen him. He's had a great day, as Devin mentioned, but he's got to be winded from chasing Silla everywhere. Jaber. Tired watching him. <laughs> There's no way I can do that. <laughs> Smart finding Silla. First time cuts it back. Clemson continues to apply pressure. Why? That's some kind of ball from Usman Silla. He is really something special for this Clemson team. And, you know, give the defensive unit for the Orange credit as to the fact that they've been able to limit their chances. You know, yeah. this is a Clemson squad. They, they push the tempo. Numbers, almost 16 shots a game, only six on the night. Only hit the target once. The problem is, is what we said coming in. It's the Syracuse attacking unit that haven't been able to get anything going on the opposite end. They only average just over 13 shots a game. Silla, first time. Whew. See what he can do. The flag goes up again, though. But they are continuing to be proactive and do what they do, score goals. Now, you mentioned defensively they've, they've handled the orange. The orange have their own struggles off of defensively. But Mike Noonan told me this week, say, hey, man, so what have you been working on? He goes, you watch the games. We score all these goals. What do you think we're working on? Like they need to, they want to be a lockdown defensive team and a little more consistent. Health haps, pop, help, health, help, health helps. There you go. There you go. Pop my boy back is big, but has anything been different for them defensively today that allowed them to be so successful? Ooh. To me, the biggest thing is winning these challenges and immediately picking up the ball and then starting to go the other direction, to be honest, because so many have come right down the middle. That's the long ball, and you win the first, and then you go the second. Foul's actually on Diaz Bonilla for backing up into Bingo. Pop Marboy and kind of undercutting him. The Syracuse faithful weren't happy, but Pop Marboy did go straight up, and to me, that's been probably the, the biggest key for them is they haven't been on it a ton. They don't care, to be fair, with the way that they set themselves up because they want to move quicker, but it's immediately moving the other direction. You know, one of the things that a very impactful manager of mine said to me as they continue to waste time here and they stop it was always change a pace change a direction if i take my momentum and isolate it into another area and especially if it's on the far side of the field it's like a game of chess now everybody else on the defensive time side has to chase you mm -hmm. that's why you know we'll get into games and i'll say just keep it right move it side to side because you're looking for seams clemson's been so good tonight on these restarts and, and picking up the 50 50s establishing themselves on the other side of the field and then trying to attack that angle. Uh-oh, could be in trouble for Gbert. Just gets it back to Boy. That was big. Out to Sean Smart. They've got some options. He's got numbers ahead of him, and he can run. Edwards, well done. These two still battling. Levesque will pick it up. Miss hit that. Back. Nice pass. Selly. Out to Diaz Bonilla. Could be on here for Syracuse. Oh, good tackle by Gibert. Looks it up, but just to Edwards. Boy gets a piece of it, and it looks like it was deflected. Yes, it'll stay Tigers' ball. Pop my boy still struggling a little bit. Says he's okay. 
Again, he's not played since September 22nd. Got injured in that Wake Forest game, a 1-0 loss on the road. Last loss they've had. Trimnell couldn't control it. Baselli. <laughs> he's a cheat code. Oh, Baselli goes down hard. And Sean Smart, and yes, there'll be a call there. It's got to be a card. And, whoa, Sean Smart want to back up. You don't want to touch the official here. You you are the guilty party here, Sean Smart. You may want to relax. Reminder, about 90 seconds ago, he had a confrontation just in front of the fourth official over here. Dead Watch ball. his hands here, because he comes really high into the face of Baselli. That's a yellow card. Yeah. What are we doing? Still no cards in this match. How direct do they go here as lethal as Kaczewski has been on the season. Nine assists by himself, seven from just this nature. Restarts in the team. 50% of their goals overall coming off dead ball situations. Can feel the urgency and the opportunity here. Played low, Levesque. Didn't make great contact. Still options here, though. Glenn clips it back into the mixer. Wig. And Smart will just get it out. Man, I thought Levesque was going to be able to put that. He's upset with himself, and you can see why. The ball's perfect. Oh, just right on the deck, hit with enough pace. Notice the rotation just coming over. This is a an attacker's dream, because you just step back through it. The problem is he's a little bit horizontal on it, and he wants to come vertical. He wants to step through it instead of trying to redirect it. That way you maintain the amount of pace on the ball. Alex uh, three subs here for Syracuse. Levesque coming out after that. Diaz Bonilla came out as well. Diagostini, Kalukian on the ball now. Ray entered. Oh, may fall for Edwards. He's there. Big save. Still an opportunity. Another save. Oh, Joseph Andema. Not once, but twice. We had to jump out of that replay because Syracuse is playing quick, and then Hobert's pass sends Wickham way back. Joseph Van Damme will have his moment in the sun in a second. We can show you those saves because it seemed like that was going to be the chance for the Orange to equalize. D'Agostini missed times his jump. Makina checked back in as well. All right, let's take a look at him now as Alexic stops play for a second. play here. Baselli tackles in hard. Was it outside the box is the question. And a yellow is going to be brandished for the first time in the match. Jibe will get it. 16 separate fouls on the evening. Look at the one touch football. Inside, outside, there's depth, there's pace, there's touch. And that is the right decision. Finally, we see a yellow card. Beautiful football from Syracuse, just a little bit late. So Jaron Jibé, the transfer from Oregon State, goes in the book. First booking of the match. Reigning Pac-12 player of the year. And Clemson's coach, Mike Newton, asking why. Is that a yellow or is that just a regular it's challenge? Where from behind, he's taking okay. him down. You have to, absolutely. So now, obviously, it is on the cusp of that 20. We always talk about, is that enough room for a guy like Kaczewski to get it up and down? Or we've seen him go before, you go know, low. You know who else hits these? It's Booster Hobert. Oh. Is he going to take it from him? Oh, he, oh, he does he have does. the ball. Yeah, he does he have can, the ball. We saw it a ton last season where he felt really confident over it. Now, injuries got in the way en route to the national title run. He can hit it, though. You can also use him as a diversion here. You can move the ball around the wall and then let someone step into it. But the amount of players that you've got right now, it looks like they're just trying to screen him so that the center back can try and go direct on goal and challenge in Dama. You see Duquesne laying behind the wall. They don't want them to go under it. They've had success in that this year. Robert, the grad student from Sweden, got his first career goal wearing a uniform for Syracuse. He transferred from Furman a couple years ago. In that game against UNC, got the winner, 1-0. Can he get an equalizer here tonight with 13 minutes to go? Don't 
Gets it up, gets it down, and it's in! Oh, what a beauty! And you can see why Vancouver took him in the third round of the MLS Super Draft last year, but he said, hold up, I'm staying in Cuse, run it back one more time. His second goal of the season. What's everybody to be smart on the restart? There's, I mean, you just sit here and there are times less is more. Just watch poetry in motion, the way he hits it. Perfect amount of pace. Up, around, down. He wears the armband for a reason, leads from back, now to front, back to even, and belief restored for the national champions. What a goal. That sequence, first of all, what, five or six one-touch passes to get the opportunity, as a foul on the far end on Wig, to get the foul that Jibe had to commit on Baselli, and then the quality and class of Hobert to score in that way. Holy moly. Think about the mindset, by the way, confidence-wise. You have a team that on the attacking end in Syracuse is struggling. We've made no arguments about that whatsoever, right? They, they're struggling to put opportunities on goal. It's shots, it's quality of of chances in front. It's not Kaczewski, it's not Baselli, Kalukian, it's none of that. Instead, it's your center back, who all night long has basically been tracking players and distributing on the back line, who produces world-class goal atop the 18. Nicholas Kalukian is still down, play continues, Meinhardt's on the ball. Meinhardt's still on it, goes down. They've got to get somebody out to take care of Kalukian, I think. He has not really moved much on the far side. And Nikola Alexis, the official's aware of it. He's going to jog down now. Couldn't see what happened. This is the third or fourth time Kalukian is down. I'm told we did not, our cameras were not able to see it either. Two separate times we've seen him take one on the head. One, he had to come off and receive some treatment on his lower back because he had gotten studs there. And it looks like he might be reaching to the same area. Has the tackle on the oh, far end. Ola Gunley. On Meinhard, wow. Ola Gunley. He's had a night. So now Alexic is going to review this, and this is reviewable. There are experimental rules. This is not. This has been in the books for years now. You can review for potential violent conduct, and that's what we're going to look for. So so the challenge here now, though, is to actually make sure there is a video review available to make sure a camera caught it and we're not exactly confident that exists so my looking saying he punched me he's yelling he punched me he's upset and the transfer from Michigan sophomore none too happy right now he was laying on the deck for the entirety of that transition, really not moving. Good teaching moment right now, though, right? For kids at home and, and for Ian McIntyre with his striker to calm him down and harness that emotion. And he's saying that he got punched. That angle, we're playing Atari. <laughs> Pong, probably a better one. Uh, yeah, we. I saw there was definite contact in the first half, and they didn't go after it there. This one, he's saying uh, there's an just, actual swing. He, he's just shaking. The referee, you see him shrugging see his shoulders. He's saying to both of coaches, I can't see anything, guys. So it was all off cam, as we said, and, and Kalukian's still got some words. And him and Lundberg now are exchanging words. So Alexic saying, I can't see what happened. But we will play on. Ola Gunlay with a heck of a sliding challenge. This game has really turned up in tempo the last 30 minutes. And Smart's ready to restart with the throw. Nice move by Smart. Gets end line and plays it out for a corner. Well done. A sophomore from Florida, another Montverde Academy product, the prep school that just is a direct pipeline of talent here to Clemson. Usman Silla, 
in the short corner, also from Montverde. Brandon Parrish to play it. Out swinging ball. Oh, our boy was there, but could not put it on net. Syracuse response was really good the last few minutes to get that goal. Devin, with this thing evenly poised now, the final 11 minutes, what's going to give either team the edge? Come back to that as Parrish is trying to make a run and playing mine hard. He will get there to keep it in play. Smart. I remember I told you in the first half that what felt like would be the separation in this game would be either a, a drastic mistake or world-class goal. Mm -hmm. We've well, gotten one of each. Yeah. Fair. You've got the set piece over here by Booster Hoberg on the on the response from Syracuse University. And then in the at the beginning of the second half, I should say the opener for Clemson, mistake defensively on the far side. Wouldn't say it was blatant, mm -hmm. but it was certainly a wrongful doing that allowed the visitors to get the edge. See if they run this back, looking for Pop Mar Boy in the middle of that six yard box. Loose, oh! That was Lundergaard, arrived at his feet, but quickly went up to alumni corner. Service tonight from either side has been spot on. Yeah, he thought it was in. It's close. Another set piece goal for Syracuse. That's 11 of 21 yep. now. I mean, again, Sometimes as a manager and certainly as a player, you don't want that to be a part of your DNA. I mean, it's great to have that in the arsenal, but you don't want to have to rely on it. Yeah. And yet, when things aren't going your way and you're down a goal and you're chasing some of these inner demons, it's great to have that as sort of the ace in the hole to help you get back into a match. Smart Diagostini in a battle. Diagostini wins it. And Chibert, good touch. We'll have another fight to win with Edwards. No call on the push. Oh, bad turnover, by Smart. Lukian, Edwards, first time cross, floats it in. Kaczewski, not much, much was on that pace. Couldn't really do much with it. Quick distribution, and it was really good by Adama. Gavin Wig wins that battle. Arthur Duquesne, Clemson, score score on it. And with 8.30 to go, Noah Singleman set to check back in the match. Under 8.30, I should say. He jogs back on, and it will replace Lorenzo Baselli. Clearly is carrying a little something here today, it seems. He subbed earlier in a match than he would in the first half, did not come back in until halfway through the second half. And didn't log that many minutes. Remy Okanlola comes back in for Sean Smart as well for Clemson. Looking for Okanlola. Stretch those legs right away, and Edwards will let an usher out. Am I crazy to think that the two of them in open field that Okanlola would win that race? He's not many players that would run by Nate Edwards. He, I was wondering if Edwards was at top speed because Okanlola created a lot of space. I mean, hooked up a lot of space there. He's got long strides, man. Long legs. There's the freshman on it now. Meinhard in some space. Does he give it a hit? Meinhard! Good save. That's really the first time over the past couple of matches we've seen high quality. Alex Meinhardt against the transfer. The, the idea behind him is just getting him better chances, and he catches it pretty true. Barely any rotation on the ball to the far side, but well collected by Jane Wickham. Meinhardt has scored in the last two games for the Tigers, a 4-0 win against Louisville and a 4-1 win against Winthrop. Obert took a shot to the face. For him, though, they just... You know, the expectation for him coming in was probably going to be somewhere around 10 goals, 10, 10, 12 goals. That's the capability mm. that they think that he has. And, you know, there's a couple of schools of thought, okay, well, they're so good everywhere, so maybe some of those goals are dispersed 
in that nature. I would also say that the absence of Mohamed Say is a big blow to what what Meinhard could have, but still could bring in certain areas to the field of play because you don't have that point man. He's so tall, they play into him more than they would have if Say would have been up there, and Meinhard could have pulled off of him. Say the 6 3 grad student now from Valencia, Spain. Has scored 22 goals in his career for Clemson. He's dealt with injury issues, but we've seen him. Got great feet, good strength, and such a difference maker for this team over the years. Not available yet again. And William Gunlay came to his feet. Okanola, good recovery. Good touch. Parrish, nice. Back to Parrish, who's going to outrun Belouz. And the cross was not what he wanted. Selfishly, I'm having a lot of fun with the goalkeepers right now. <laughs> Gene Wickham and Joseph and Dema have put on quite the show over the last 20 minutes. And I get it, we've seen two goals in the second half, but they've made some top quality saves, and certainly, and Dema on the back to back in the box just prior to the goal. And we, I mean, this game has picked up pace so much that we couldn't even get back to the end. Dema saves that he put up back to back. Booster Hoberg made sure of that. Yep. Agostini, back, back heel, oh well, oh, 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 oh. saw it from a mile away. And Jaber, well done reading that. Now the Frenchman comes back, comes forward from the center back spot, and he's going to maintain possession for them. Finds his compatriot in Jaber, up top to Parrish. Parrish, he'll take a shot, and he's asking for a deflection, not going to get it. Can't believe it. Two separate sequences, by the way, where they've sat Okanlola deeper. So Nate Edwards stays with him, and then a really good job by Brandon Parrish coming out of the midfield. And they've isolated this matchup with Brandon Parrish and Josh Blues. Now, I don't know how much they're going to be able to chase it with five minutes to go, mm -hmm. but 120 seconds, two separate occasions. Parrish wins that 1v1 track race. With five minutes to play alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cuff. 1 1. All is even between the last two national champions. Clemson struck first in the beginning of the second half. The 50th minute mark, Arthur Duquesne, the freshman from France, got his first career goal. But man, Booster Hobert, the grad student from Syracuse, scored his second career goal in an orange uniform and in back-to-back -back ACC games. He had the winner last week for North Carol at North Carolina and the equalizer here that, folks, we will try to show it to you because it was an absolute beauty of a free kick. And all to play for here, Devin, down the stretch. He's got five points in the last three. Reminder, he had, I get it, it was a loss, but he had the assist. The hockey assist. Yes, you remember, NCAA is a little bit different. Yep. That's the leadership and the capability that they talk about, though, for the center back. What a step in there. Could be an opportunity. Kaluki on it, waiting for Diagostini, but Andama read it all along. The box. They're saying he's outside the box. Alexic looking at his fourth official, who says, giving him a thumbs up. And the far side fourth official, Christopher Bornkamp, saying, hey, we're this is all good. We'll take a look at that in a second, because it was tight. Last time there was a shout the other way, it was a penalty shout. Clemson went and scored the other way to open the game. Let's take a quick look. Uh, surprised he didn't let this roll all the way through. Now he steps up like, hey, I'm going to come get it, and then watch. Not there. Watch. Uh, might be on it. area. Remember, whole ball. Whole ball, just like it's on the goal. The whole ball has to be outside the box. I think he was okay there. Let's go, let's go. That's actually Democritus Pachalidis, the far side AR. Just over three minutes to play. Both these teams, bear in mind, are chasing Wake Forest. In terms of points, Wake sits on 13. Four and three ahead, five, four, five ahead, respectively, of each team. And Damon will claim that. 2.50 to go. Both teams won it, though. Out to Duquesne. Finds the feet of Trimnal. Looking for Meinhard. Oh, yeah, Gunlay's had an outstanding game. as well. And a couple quick subs, Nate Richmond and Lorenzo Baselli will re-enter the match here in the final 220. 
Subs are jogging off. Trimnell's going to make way for Richmond. He <laughs> just slowed the run down a little bit. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Clock gets a couple of more seconds to go away. Just a wee bit. That's the speed of Nate Richmond, though. The idea that they can hit him quick, especially on this right-hand flank where they've had a decent amount of space open up over the past five minutes. Selly on it. Oh, oh, cleared out by Gibert, but play on. Koscheski out to Edwards. First time ball. Good recovery by Duquesne. Back to Oya Gunlay. Under a buck 20 to play. Might fall to Baluz. It did. Now he stepped forward. Can we go transition the other way? Richmond busting forward. He's going to get there. Oya Gunley closed him down. He's got help from Edwards. We are under a minute. Hobert heads it out. Are we going back the other way? We're in a track meet. 50 seconds to go. Turned over. Well, Baselli recovered nicely. And Jaber will just take it out to touch. End to end. Tantalizing stuff. Clock is still running. Oya Gunlay kind of slow to get out there. They made both teams just take a point at this point. Twenty seconds. Okanyola just Akina holding Silla. <laughs> We've seen some late activity and heroics on this SU field this year. Multiple last-minute goals, but not today. One-one. They will split the spoils. Devin Kerr, your final thought on what we saw here today. I'd like to tip the hat to both coaches. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys, they showed you why they are two of the best.